Page 324. 324. Those tests, top of the page, that's where we were learning. Let's go over that again inside. Explain this outside, I want to do it a little bit inside, but let's explain it outside a little bit better. Succinctly, everything that Hashem created in this world, He created with three dimensions. There's the dimension of space, makom, olam, the dimension of time, and the dimension of nefesh, which I understand, my chidush, is the human experience of space and time, as opposed to the nefesh. Nefesh is not a dimension. A person is not a dimension any more than a bear or a dog or a fish. But um, the difference between the human and particularly the nefesh, nefesh Yisrael, is that what we do with the other two dimensions, that in itself creates a dimension, the dimension of nefesh. You find a lot of times in Chazal this, this idea uh, once it's brought down into the human realm, it has a different din. Dover shiva minyan ain't a roya simon bracha. Once you count something, it doesn't have a simon bracha. There's a difference if you count it or if you don't count it. It's there, it's a metzias, because it's, it's a metzias in olam and in shana, but it's not yet a metzias in nefesh. Mm -hmm. so nefesh is basically our experience, or even more importantly, what we do with the world that Hashem created. That creates a dimension unto itself. So by, by, um, by spiritualizing, the olam and the shana through the nefesh you have a uh, uh, spiritual so I, I, I explained this let me just explain a little bit further that the olam shana nefesh came to bear came to fruit we find chazal say um, it's explained by the arizal at the time yitzias mitzrayim so yitzias mitzrayim mitzrayim is um, the opposite of shabbos right the, the shabbos is nachla b'li mitzarim and mitzrayim is all about borders all about boundaries, all about uh, tzimtzum, and nobody can get out of Mitzrayim. So Mitzrayim was uh, a makom, which is a certain reality for the Jewish people for a couple of hundred years, is that's where we live and that's all there is to it. There's nothing more to, nothing more to talk about. We're not going anywhere. We're, where are we going? You, get, you leave, it was probably the same feeling that a Jew had in the ghetto in, in, in 1940. That the, the, the idea of uh, uh, there's just simply no place to go. You go, you move out of this, you get shot. You get in here, it's you know, uh, there's no place to go but up. All you can do is, is uh, be born here and die here, but you're, you're stuck. So that's the, the ultimate Mitzrayim, Rekesh, that just to be Makar, but El The ultimate Mitzrayim is, this is where I am, there's no place to go. When we went out, Lechte, Racharai, Bamidbar, Be'eretz, Loi, Zarua, um, and we defied um, not just the, the uh, not just the miracles of the Midbar, the Man and all, but, but uh, we, we, we rose above Makkah. Uh, that was an amazing, Kodesh uh, Baruch who created a dimension of space, and we defied the space. Um, and as the Swarm say, we defied time because we were supposed to be there for 400 years, and we left after a couple of hundred years. So by Kriyas Yamsuf, when, when it was all over, and that was behind us, the Tzriyam were behind us, we defied time. And when we came to our Sinai, we defied um, nefesh because the whole um, human experience can go two ways. Either the human experience can be, what's in it for me? That could be the human experience. That's the normal kind of thing that we're, we're um, <clears throat> I remember growing up in, in, uh, in, in Buffalo, New York, there was a rabbi, Klein, who was a very uh, learned, conservative rabbi, actually. So he used to say at every, uh, he looked at Slobodka, I believe. So he used to say at every funeral, he says, when you're born, it's a chazal, but he used to say, when you're, when you're born, you're born with your hands closed. And when you die, everybody dies with their hands open. That's, that's all I remember about what he said. <laughs> the, whole, the whole speech in between, I don't remember. But uh, the, the, it's, a, it's just like an interesting thing that the whole idea is to do this transformation and this conversion because the normal human experience is to bring to you, to, to um, take esoteric ideas and monetize them. 
you know, to take to take uh, different uh, realities and bring them to my benefit. But um, then you mature from that, hopefully. And, and what what Torah is supposed to do is take that which I have monetized and spiritualize them. So what what it means is that in the whole olam shon and nefesh, meaning if Hashem created three dimensions of olam shon and nefesh, space, time, uh, humans, uh, um, why do we want to defy it? Why? What are we busy? Defying it. If he made Mitzrayim, why don't we want to get out of Mitzrayim? What's the what's the the answer is that what Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and this is we repeat this over hundreds of times, Hakadosh Baruch Hu in his world Kiviyachol, as much as we can understand it, is completely spiritual. He wanted the spirituality to Olam Chesed Yibane. He wanted the spirituality to reach the physical a physical place. Even something physical could be spiritual. In other words, that's as far as you can go, as far as HaKadosh Baruch Hu can go, is in, in, the, in, in, in permeating spirituality is to create the Makum Olam Shana Nefesh. Mitzrayim was the Memtesh Shari Tumma. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu can get all the way there, and if we could turn that into Kedusha, then we made everything into Kedusha. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, um, I mentioned before that, that if you open um, any any um, Sefer Kabbalah, Ramchal, uh, Zohar, uh, Sefer Ayitzira, um, Eretz Chaim, which I just started learning now, uh, which is Ruch Chaim Vital, uh, it, it, it all everyone starts the same page, the same two page, for, the first two pages are the same in every at every Sefer. Why did Hashem create the world anyway? That's the whole thing. And then comes the Kabbalah Sefer. Um, so I'm. I'm you can say that you know the first two pages of every every say it's a, it's the same thing, but the, the the answer basically is however whether you want to talk about partsufim or igulim or whatever it is that you want to talk about, the answer is a very very simple answer that that Akhush Baruch created the world because he didn't it, as much as we can understand he didn't want the world to to stay esoteric and infinite, he wanted kedusha to take place in a finite world. Why? For, hmm? Why? Why we don't know. Um, uh, the, well, the only thing I can guess is that um, it's like I don't want to be a Baal in my life. If I want to be, if I'm going to be a Baal Tzedak, I need an Ani here to get Tzedak into. I got to do it Lamaisa. So the only place of Lamaisa of Asiya is is in this world. So I had to create a world. There, there had to be a world for the Chesed of Akedus Baruch to be complete. So they had to. So so uh, that, and that's Malchus. Malchus is when Akedus Baruch permeates everything, even the lowest place. So, so if we take that which is in Malchus, that which is in the lowest place, Mitzrayim, and we convert it, we defy it, we take the Ola, the Shana, and the Nefesh, and we convert it to Ruchnius, then we've done the Ratzon Hashem ultimately. That's, that's, that's what the whole world's about. Then we have a world of Geula. We have a world of Geula. So, um, so let's understand it. <clears throat> that when we came to Har Sinai, um, it, the, the, the normal Nefesh would be you know, standing at R.C. night, what are we going to get out of this? Like all the other nations asked, what's in it for us? You know, it was a very um, self-serving, um, you know, you know, just, just uh, everything's Magyali. Egotistic. Egotistic, but you know, the, the, the expectation of life is to get. You know, uh, it, it once, when, once we said Nasev and Ishma, we defied that. Nasim Anisha means, okay, we'll hear later what's in it for us right now. Like, what's in it for you, Hashem? So what, that, that was the ultimate expression, beautiful expression of Nefesh. And it was at that moment that we were able to be Echad. By Yichan Yisrael we were able to be Echad because when we're in it for ourselves, that's what separates us. You know, I have a business, you have a similar business, what's going on? <laughs> we're in competition, right? I want to marry this person, you want to marry this person, what's going on? You know, the whole world is upset. So, but uh, once we're not in it for ourselves, my nafkamin if I have it, if you have it. If, uh, so the so Nasev and Ishma was the ultimate spiritual expression of taking something which is so physical, bringing something towards ourselves and pushing it towards Hashem. So that's so, so at that point, Olam Shana Nefesh. Um, to put it, as Tavon put it last a couple of days ago, also to find the infinity in everything finite. So it means, which is really the same, same thing that that Hakadosh Baruch Hu created this. We could take the Gashmis out of it, or we could find the Ruchnis in it and say, okay, this is for Hashem. It's it's a real, um, 
it's a, it's a real avoidant in life. I mean, this is very practical. It sounds very esoteric, but it's a real avoidant in life to take everything that Hashem gives us and to figure out how we're going to use this um, to, serve him. to serve Him. It all, all, already sounds too religious. Uh, let me, let me, not even how we can use it to serve Him. How we can use it for the purpose it was created. How we can use ourselves for the purpose that we were created. It's it's it's. You know, it's not even about serving him, you know, per se. You know, that, that serving, that, that bowing down to Hashem, Anachnu Karim Mishtafelin, is to say that it's about you, it's not about me. But a Kodesh who created the world, so there should be a dira, la Kodesh Baruch Hu He didn't create it for us to be, have a dira, <laughs> B'tach Taigim. Created, created the, he should have a dira, B'tach Taigim. So uh, we're part of that. That's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful job. It's not a. It's a, it's not about uh, dying or starving or anything. Like that. It's a wonderful job, but it's not even about. Like I'm saying, it's not even about serving him. It's about using the world correctly. So it's, it's, how does that work in terms of the concept of schar Meaning that whatever we get as a schar, the chuk to what we're saying, is not really a schar because even that schar, whatever gash means, whatever schar we get, is also to be used. Schar in this world, you mean? Yeah, whatever we for have sure. to, also to be used. It's for sure partial like that, that, that uh, the benefits that we get are because we're, we're, good, me. we're good bankers, you know, we're, 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 good, we're doing good with, with what HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us. So is that schar though? No, schar mitzvah b'ayah on the lake. The schar is different, you did your job very good. But, but here it's about, you're a good apotropos. So you're doing well, you're, you're more. Good, you're a good gabba. See, I'll tell you something that I, th- I think, this is just, uh, very little to do with this, but I think that, um, you know, people talk about chinuch. I don't know that I'm an expert in chinuch, but I, 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 I do think this is my observation, that probably the, 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 the worst thing that we could all do for our children is to spoil them. In other words, if, if children grow up with an attitude of magiali, um, it, it's very difficult to get a spiritual Jew out of that. It's very difficult to get a firm Jew out of that. It's very difficult to get a mensch out of that. Because Magiel, it, 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 they can be the sweetest, cutest, you know, it doesn't make any difference. But it, every, everything is surrounding, like, so what's in it for me? You know, and it's to the point that they don't even think that way, because that's more of a, like, what am I getting out of this? And there's a sort of a suspicious look in every side. How's, how's a marriage supposed to work? How's a, how's a friendship supposed to work? How are they supposed to learn to her? How are they going to go and, 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 and be sleepless at a time when, when something is not the right thing to do. How are they going to be a How are they going to not steal and not lie? Um, I, I read once that the biggest um, problem that uh, very, very wealthy people have is not spoiling their children, whether it's in a secular place. Like, this is the biggest problem that they have. And, and many people, intelligent people, are very <coughs> aware of it, but they can't help themselves. <laughs> Simply they can't help themselves. So the, so, so the Gemara says, Desire of Neaniyim should have to take care. Like the, the, this whole idea of Magiyali uh, is is a antithesis to to Ruchnius. It's an antithesis to Ruchnius. It's like the most. I'm not saying to be cruel to our children. I'm, I'm saying that there has to there has to be a chinuch that not everything you want you get. But there, there has to be a no matter how much you can give them. That's not the point. And the, and and deeper is the chinuch is why do you have what you have. But I think it's more important than, than, than um, basically any other chumrah that's out there. Is, 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 the, is this mida of, you know, like, why do I have what I have and share? Share. There has to be a Mitzrayim and Gula. Yeah, a Mitzrayim and Gula. <laughs> so, like, um, yeah. So I, that's the point in Olam Shana Nefesh. That's the point in. in Taking that which Hakadosh Baruch Hu created, finding the infinity within it, and creating eternity. <clears throat> so infinity is where it starts, Gashmis is where it goes, and eternity is the infinity that we find in it and take it and move it forward. So that's the, so. So what can ask themselves and even train children to ask themselves like, what's the lasting value in this? You know, what's 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 going to really happen if you? eat this or if you don't eat this or if you steal it or if you don't steal it. If you steal it, that's it's like it's for the moment, Gishmat, but there's ramifications, this world, next world. So this but the but the, the Magili person, you know, can't can't resist the moment. You can't resist the moment. This is 
you know, it's, it's all, I don't want to be, you know, it's like one of the main um, issues of culture in this great country that we live in is, um, you know, I'm not a friar. <laughs> like, like, that's the Ten Commandments here, like, you know, you low friar. It's my parking space, not your friar. Like, it's killing us, this whole idea, because look at the, not be a friar. Like, you know, lot stuff gives up. Give something up to somebody else. And, oh, this, this is very protecting one's turf, you know, this is a very, you know, I'm nobody's fool. The, 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 the idea of not being anybody's fool is, is, is being spoiled. It's being spoiled, and that's a Magili thing, and it's a, it, it's a, it's a but as, as, as I say, it's hard to resist. It's hard to resist. It kind of looks at you and, you know, uh, you know wants, and it's, like, yeah, it's, hard, it's hard to resist, but then if, if you can't resist it, then they can't resist anything. So that's, uh, okay, that's just my, uh, my two cents. The way it worked historically is as follows on a linear level. Um, there was Mitzrayim, there was Chris Yamsuf, there was Harsina. Harsina started a period of really heavy Nevoah, serious Nevoah. Nevoah started earlier. Nevoah started with Avram Avinu at the latest. But, but the Gemara says that. Um, the world is 6,000 years, 2,000 years Torah Vavot, 2,000 years Torah, and 2,000 years Yemos HaMashiach. So the 2,000 years Torah um, wasn't in, 2,000 years Torah wasn't in, in, at Har Sinai, because that was in 2448. So where was 2,000 years Torah? Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu was, was um, born in 1948, so he was 52 years old then. He was born, he was 52 years old when he, when he had his first Nevoah. And that's when the time of Nevoah started, hence the founding of the Jewish people. And 2448, um, I'm sorry, uh, the year 2000, when, when Avraham Avinu had his first Nevoah, to the year 4000, which was exactly the day, date, the year that Rebbe of Yudan Nasi redacted the Mishnah, was the whole gamut of Nevoah, meaning Tarsh of Iksav, Tarsh of Alpet. In that, you have Torah Shabbat Torah Shabbat Peh. So the, the period of Nebua that we know about, Yeshayahu, Moshe Rabbeinu, Yirmiyahu, um, started with Matan Torah, heavy Nebua, in 2448, and ended with Good. Esther in 3448. And 552 years later, was Rabbi Huda Nasi uh, redacting the, the mission. That's the timeline of Jewish history. So it, there was exactly 1,000 years out of the 2,000 years from the year 2000 to the year um, three, th well, from 2448 to 3448 from Matan Torah was exactly 1,000 years amongst those 2,000 years. You with me on this? Mm -hmm. So, so um, during that time of Nevoah, started with Har Sinai and it ended with Esther. So during that whole Tkufa, Meaning, meaning basically from Har Sinai until the Bayashani. During that Tkufa, there was a Tikkun of Nefesh, Oilam Shana Nefesh. Nevuah is the ultimate human experience where you can see spirituality and infinity in something finite. Uh, Hashem is talking to me. It's, it's different than what happened afterwards. We're talking to Hashem. Hashem is talking to me, that means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's place in this world. Hashem is talking, Anochi. Anochi Hashem infinity touching ground is what is what happened. Every time infinity touches ground, um, you get netzach, you have eternity. Uh, 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 please absorb this. This is an extremely important yisay. The world is not eternal. Um, the buildings are not eternal. People are not eternal. I was going a little bit around and looking here in Eretz Yisrael, like, you know, they, where was the original Beitar? It was right over there. Okay, original Beitar had a couple hundred thousand people in it. It's a bunch of trees. <laughs> where is it? Maybe underground. Nothing is eternal. The only thing that's eternal was Tartar. Nothing's eternal. At the time, it was Tel Aviv, you know, but, 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 but not eternal. Manhattan's not eternal. Someday they'll find it, you know, layers and layers underneath, <laughs> underneath the ground. What's eternal is whenever HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or or the Ein Seif, infinity, touches the ground, injects itself, inserts itself into the world of Gashmias, so then it becomes Netzach, it becomes eternity. It, infinity becomes eternity. That's the combination, that's the recipe. 
So uh, that's our job. The job is to make Malchus Hashem. Malchus is eternity. Netzach, Hoid, Yisoid, Malchus. Netzach, Hoid, Yisoid, Malchus. Netzach is infinity. And Hoid, Yisoid puts it into the ground, which is Malchus, which is eternity. So what's the ultimate uh, Malchus is Nevoah. Because Nevoah is a Baruch Hu actually talking to man. That's why the whole Torah is eternal. The whole Torah has to be forever. And also Nevoah. Everything that the Yeshayahu and Yermiyahu said has to be forever. Otherwise we wouldn't know it. The, the, the Gemara says this lashon. The Gemara says, Nevoah shehutzer chaladairois nichtiva. Nevoah shaloi hutzer chaladairois loi nichtiva. If it's eternal, it's written. If it's not eternal, it's not written. There were many nevoahs, nevu- but a nevoah that, that, that was really absorbed by, by the Navi and by the people, this is Hashem coming into this world. Hashem comes into this world, right away you have infinity, but Hashemis, so and therefore you have eternity. So, so it's, it's a um, nevoah. So that period ended with Esther, meaning between the Ba'is Risha and the Ba'is Shani. Now Esther, says Reb Tzadik, was on the cusp. She was on the borderline. So hence, she was arguing, she and Mordechai were arguing with the Anshik Nessus Abdola, which existed at that time, it says right in the Megillah, Kisuni Ladeiros, make, make, canonize me, make me part of the Torah. What, was, what did she want? I mean, she wanted like, her story to be more, so to be part of the Torah, she what, what, what was the big problem? It would be a Medrash. Medrash has, what's, what's the Bayah? The answer is that no, the, the message of Purim, she felt, was an eternal message. There was infinity in them woods, in Persia, in Chutzlars. So, 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 what we're talking about again, Oilam Shana Nefesh. The Tikkun of Oilam was in Mitzrayim. The Tikkun of Shana was in was in the Kriyas The Tikkun of Nefesh started at Harsinai and went all the way until Esther. That was the Tikkun of Nefesh. So, is she going to have the Nebuah of that period of time? It goes back. The circle. It's, a, it's an eagle. It, it goes back. The tikkun goes back over and over and over again. I'll show you even before Mashiach that, that the, um, the tikkun of Oilam Shadon Nefesh starts again after Esther. So, so if, you, if you imagine it has concentric circles, which the Makubalim do imagine it as, um, and I say imagine because nobody knows, but the, but the way we can understand it is, and you've said everyone's seen the pictures of the circles, right? So the, 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 the pictures of the Egulim, which is always a bunch of circles, and everyone says, okay, not for me, and closes the book. It's, it's simple, simply the cycles of history of Oilum Shana Nefesh. That's all, that's all it is. Whether it's the Ramchah circles or the Arizal circles, um, Oilum Shana Nefesh. By the way, the new Kabbalah's from the circles are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> they finally like not doing it with, a, uh, with all those things. Uh, Projector. Protractor. 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 Yes. Protractor. Um, so it's, it's nice, do it by computer. But so that's that's the you know, but we're talking about Esther. So Esther says, Kisvuni Ladairois, I want to be Netzach, I want to be part of Botar Shibik Sab. She's like Nessa goes, I don't know. You're in Chutzlaritz. It wasn't really a Ness Nigla. And Esther Minatara Minayin, Aster Aster Panay by Yamahu. It's all about Hester. Let me say one thing, and then we're going to read inside very quickly. Yeah, there, there's three things that always go together. And this is really uh, epitomizes everything that I just said. Um, one of them is Nes Nigla, Nes Nister. Nes Nigla goes together with Navua, which goes together with Tereshib Iksav. Nes Nister goes together with Teresh Peh, which is not Nevoah, it's analytic. Something that we come up with. Ruach HaKodesh, the Gemara calls it. Ruach HaKodesh. Goes together with Teresh Peh. Nes Nister. Goes together. Did I get all three? Two. Nes Nigla, Teresh Sav, Nevoah. Nes Nister, Teresh Peh. And so Esther really was out of place. When Miguel and Esther she was on the cusp. That's Nes Nister. So. Oh, what does Esther say? Esther, we're not terminating. We found you. 
Aster, Aster, Ponai, Behemu, you're part of Esther. Comes Esther, she says, but look at the beginning of the Posse. Va'anoichi, Aster, Aster, Ponai, Behemu, Va'anoichi is the ultimate Gilly. Anoichi Hashem Alikecha, Asher, it's a Sicha, Meher, it's Mitzrayim. There's an Anoichi in that Posek. Anoichi, Aster, Aster. What you're looking at here is not Hester Panim, you're not looking at Anoichi, you're looking at the final final throes of the of the of, of Gilui, Gilui, Nasnigla. So Esther's miracle was kind of um, Nes Nister, it was kind of Nigla. It was Nister in the sense that no, no sea split. But it was Nigla in the fact that the Meshigana Hashverish fell for this green lady Esther. <laughs> and Haman, who was the biggest macher in the world, was hanging from a tree. And if you put the whole story together and count the, put the puzzle pieces into one, you have a nest here. Uh, so is that called Nigla Nister? It's called On the Border. <laughs> it's the end of Nigla and the end at the beginning of Nister. It's Esther von Neuchi, Aster Aster, Panai Mahu. I'm right there. Hence the Machlokas, whether Megillus Esther is part of the Tarsha Bixab. Part of the Torah about that, Esther one. It's part of the Torah of Excel. So that's the the important trifecta of, of of history, the transition. Not necessarily by the way that one is better or worse than the other. It's just two different two different stages. So let's let's learn inside here. I'm going to go fast. It'll be easy now that I read this one. Called over who ba'olam shon of anafish to majisa to sefer yitzira, sefer yitzira, which was said by Avraham Avinu and taught by Rabbi Akiva, um, points out this Elam Shana Nefesh. Open Nefeshois, so now let's talk about Nefeshois. And we said Har Sinai, Oshan, Kulai. When we got to Har Sinai, it was already a Kiyom of Elam Shana Nefesh, Oshan, Kulai. So when, that's where it started, 2448. Nefeshois, Esther, Saif, Madregas, Hanavua. Esther, 1,000 years later from Har Sinai, 3448, was the end of the Madrega of Navua. Remember, Navua goes with Tarsh of Iksav, which goes with Nasnikul. Kichol Hanavim, Shahayaz, Mikfar, I, there were Navim around. Chagi, Zechariah, Malachi, Ezra, there were Navim around. They were, they were already around. They were around, they were alive. Kichol Hanavim, Shahayaz, Mikfar, Shar Salem, Navua. They were grandfathered in with Navua, but the last one to get Navua. Last person to become a navi in this world was Esther. Rak Esther, Azhi, Shanasis, Navi. I think Mordechai was a navi. Mar brings Raya's, but, but he was navi before Esther. He made Esther into a navi. Rak Esther, Azhi, meaning what I, what I mean to say about it is he told Esther, look for the infinity. No, no, don't, don't, look for, don't look for the moment. I'm going to die. Don't, don't look for that. Look for. That's a, if you don't find it, someone else will. Yeah, and if you don't find somebody else will, that, it's there. There's infinity. Rak Esther, Ozhi, Shanasis, Nevia, and then she became a Navi. Umimena, Vahala, Lanimso, Oidis, Chachis, Nevoa, Lajumbria. From that moment on, there was never another Nevoa as we know it. So somebody comes along today and says, I had a prophecy. Check them into a drug rehabilitation center. It's not happening. It doesn't happen. There's no prophecy. That was the end of Nevoah Yisrael. Now the Megillah was written. Written is the key word here. Remember, Torah Shebiksav goes with Nevoah. Right? Torah Shebaopeh goes with Chaim. Ruch HaKodesh. Shebiskalos it was Netzach. And the fact that it was a Nes Nigla, here's our three. Vizgalus ha Nevua, ha Yeshua rather, Beschiras, Beschira Lamala. The fact that the Yeshua was Miskala. What does that mean? It means that the Kvod Hashem was Niskala. Hashem was revealed in this world. That's what a miracle is. That's what happened by Kriyas Yamsa. That's what the whole Shir is about. Zekeli van Veyu. 
We see, we see Hashem in this world. So his scholars are Yeshua, they were able to pull it out and see it during the time of Purim also. So now it became eternal, so we have a Nes Purim, not just a Purim, Kriya Samagila, Nes Purim, there's a celebration of this Purim every single year. She was the main point. The main thing in the story here was the Nefesh. This wasn't about getting out of Persia. That's not what it was. And it wasn't about defying time. They were buying time, but they weren't defying it. It was about Esther. Megillas Esther. He Hayikr. Kamashinamar Vatihtoiv Esther. Esther wrote the Megillah. Umurdacha Yoshe Visharamela, who Tafalah the Gemara says, he was a minor Navi compared to her. He Ikr on Nesra Yeshua Yada. Because she's the one who pulled it off. She, what does it mean she pulled it off? She, not just she had the divorce, she found. She brought it, she took the lowest level, the bedroom of Ahasuerus, <laughs> and made it into the highest place. So maybe that's what Anshayk Nesla Zidol didn't understand until she explained it, which is why they weren't willing to go along with it. Yes, before right. And they saw themselves as, I, I, I would say something even more human. <laughs> as bad as that was also for us. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, they were eager to get on to the next stage. <laughs> it's by a shady time for it. The Bayes Rishon was destroyed. It was almost year 70. The Nevi'im said that it's going to take 70 years to build a base of the let's get, on, let's get on with the process of history. And if, if you're here Shabbos and I'm speaking, this is, this is what it was. Like, uh, you know, the, the, the Chachma Yavna wanted to, let's just get on with it. It's Golos time, that's all. It's Golos. You know, Rebbe Kiva said it. Not so fast, guys. Like, it's like it's, uh, where, you, where you're running into where you're running into Golos for two thousand years, where we can still do something. Mashiach, Mashiach, we want Mashiach now. He ikar on Nesar Yisrael Yadosh Zehu Soif Madregas on the Nisim. So she was getting in under the wire to just get into that last piece of uh, of Nes, which was so important. Don't rush into Bayashani syndrome. It wasn't a miracle which completely defied nature. Can you say it's here, Smith's trying to Moshe Rabbeinu? As Moshe Rabbeinu's Nisim were, Vachend Yeshua, Yeshua stopped the sun. She didn't stop no sun. Beliyawa Novi, Valisha, Okadat, these were miracles of biblical proportion. Comes Esther and she says, my miracle is also of biblical proportion, however hidden it might be. Ba'anoichi, aster, aster, I didn't stop the sun, I didn't split the sea, but I did stop Haman. And I did stop, I did, I did, I did get, it, get it involved with Ahasuerus, who would have thought? I will, I will bezeh. This itself, shehi biksha me'amelech va'asar etzayim. This, this woman comes and she talks to Achishverish and he listens to her. You talk about Magiali, you know, like uh, talk about who's spoiled with Achishverish. I mean, talk about somebody who, if he didn't get his way, killed his wife. I mean, this was the ulti ultimate in hedonism and being a jerk. <laughs> so, we, I, I, you understand what I'm saying? Like, we got to get out of that Achishverish moment. Like, you know, that's why I'm like, Stop, stop thinking. At the time, everybody realized, wow, we have a miracle here. This is not this is not normal, what's going on. It's a melech hafach vach kazeh, achashverosh, who would have thought? A meshigin king, hafach vach. Every minute, it's unstable. Hafach vach means it was an unstable king. Who would have thought? The answer is it's a miracle. You never know. Look, we see this stuff in our life, you know, like all these, I mean, you know, we're all old enough to have seen things like, who would have ever believed if I said that the Iron Curtain would come down, that the Berlin Wall would come down, that uh, even that the State of Israel would be created? Who would have ever believed such things? I mean, uh, this was Chalaymach's fairy tales. I was listening, not that I'm such a big chassid, but I was just listening to uh, uh, Shimon Peres' five-minute uh, uh, Yom Ha'atzmut speech. We would have ten minutes, he would have lost me. <laughs> five minutes, I could do it, it, this, was, this was his point, like, you know, like the, the, the Zvan of the Hakaba of, of, of Medina Sisro, 
Um, who would have believed? Like, you know, like, uh, I, I like the way he thinks, like, we have a country with the biggest, as big of a population as Denmark. <laughs> like, he's, he's impressed with Denmark. I don't know. So, you know, but the point of the matter is, like, you know, forget forget the Zionism, forget Paris, forget everything. Like you know, I, you know, uh, walking walking yesterday, watching the plays, you know, like those are Jews doing that. Like, like it's a like my, my father would always tell him, like you know, that Jews don't know how to fly planes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, like well, what are, like you know, in perfect formation. Us like you know, like it's uh, it, it is a these, these are we have seen things even in our own life in recent history which are hafafa. So Esther says, this, the, 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 where did this come from? This, this kind of nister ship and nigla, nigla ship and nister, that's because Esther squeezed herself into the Torah ship and it out. And it became Netzach, and that's what she wanted. You can explain everything that happened in Persia at that time naturally. You can explain it sociologically. Because it was the very end, it was the end of Nisim, of revealed miracles. And now that she created this Netzach, Hashem is still doing this with us. Where she eternalized the idea of Nes Nister B'Taycha Nikola. That's a big Yeshar Koch to ask her. Look what she did. The miracles that we see, who would have thought? Every time we say, who would, who would have thought? Who would have believed? Who would have believed that guy would die? I remember even even a few, just two years ago, three years ago, like our, our people were saying, you know, you know, you know, he's there forever. He's not there forever. Not that this guy's any better. I'm just saying nobody's forever. Like you know, nobody's forever. This one gets, uh, you know, uh, Saddam Hussein is also forever. Everybody's forever. Nobody's forever. Like, you know, they're here today, gone tomorrow. You know, Hashem is here forever. Where? Morsi. Morsi in Egypt. Morsi? Who would have, you know? Vazelm is Sitra de Nukva. So what happens now? Sitra de Nukva. Sheino Yeshua Shlema. Da Kati Avde Achashver Shana. To understand Sitra de Nukva, the female. Aspect the shechina, shechina, not shochen, not the shochen, the shechina, the feminine. What's the feminine mean? The makabel. The, the, the time, the three, nesnikla, tarshibiksav, navi, nevua. This was Hashem directly laser beams coming into this world. Now, we're here. We've moved from Hashem's Isarusa de la Ela to Isarusa de la Sata. That's the feminine. Shechina, which is a higher madrega because we're taking everything that Hashem gave, we're planting it, and now we're growing, growing trees. Like, like the metaphor of, of, of Isha. So that's the, in Kabbalistic language, you have Abba, Ima. In um, other Kabbalistic language, you have Duchra, Nukva. But the point is, we wanted to know what's the Ratz and Hashem. The Nevi'im looked up to the Shemaim and Davin. We want to know what the Ratz and Hashem is. We look down into a Gemara and we try to figure out what's the Ratz and Hashem. What does Hashem want from us now? So that's a Bechina of Nukh that's coming through our analysis, which is the ultimate Malchus. That means that means that HaKadosh Baruch has permeated even the lowest levels. It's not only looking into the Gemara, though. It's looking into everything that we see. Everything. We've saw right. right. That's what I like it. Point is, we need to analyze. It needs us. So it's the ultimate expression of nefesh. And, and if, if that's real mouthless, that means that a Kodesh is not hovering, permeating into this world. When there's real mouthless, mouthless shochahi, then Mashiach will come. Hayyabayay mahu. Hayyashem lamelech. Where? Hashem is one and his expression of what it is. So, so it needs to be a million sukim that the Kodesh Baruch is permeating the, the earth. And Hamas, it has to be this permeation. So, so that we have um, until today. So what happened at the time of Esther, Esther said, 
build a Ba'isheni that was a change from Zohar to Nekeva. Yeah? A change from Hashem's Isarusa de la'elu to Isarusa de la From no saint to Mechava. So it says, Rup Tzadik ve'ester minat Torah minayin. Where is Esther in the Torah? Says the Gemara in Chulen. Anoichi haster aster panai bayar mahu. That there's an anoichi, and yet there's an aster aster on the same day. Shemisham hayusher is nafsha. That was where she was in history. Shekol anafoshes hey moishi satar if you do it. The Zayar says that the, the idea of finding somebody in the Torah is to finding out what their shoresh neshama is. Her shoresh neshama was to be on the on the on the on the gvul of anoichi and aster aster pana. By the way, this was a new radical shot in the Gemara because everybody learns the Gemara in full and says, okay, the dogesh is on the aster aster. Zerub Tzadik is saying, no, why, why are you just being madish on the on the zivuk between vanoichi and aster aster? So there's a whole puzzle there. That's the shot in the Gemara. The Hiskalus, the Anoichi, and here he goes, that the Hiskalus, the revelation of Anoichi, Sheba Hastar is upon him, Anoichi, Aster, Aster, Zeu, Saif, Vesium, Or, Hanavua, that was the grand finale of Navua, Bahasaga, the Tarshi, Bixav, and hence our trifecta is complete. Shemi Oz, Ve'elech, from Esther An, meaning Anshe Knesset Hagdola, Bayesheni, Bovel, Pompadisa, from Esteran, Nistamu Hanafashes Hanam Shachas, Mir Retar Shibik Sahaf, our Nishamas are different now. Our Tikkun of Nefesh is no longer that of Gilui, which is Tar Shibik Sahaf, the Hiskil or Hanafashes, the Tar Shibal Pan. So that's why it took from 3448. Until the the the, the, uh, the redaction of Rebbe of the mission in the year four thousand exactly to complete the two thousand years. It's all in the two thousand years, but this was the or of Navua and this was the or Tarshabapat. Tarsh Tarshabiksav, Tarshabapat. Most of which, by the way, at that point was Tarshabapat. Why? Because Tarshabiksav, Tarshabiksav. Because Tarshabapat keeps on going. We're still doing. We're still we're still being Mahadish Tarshabapat. And this was the difference between Moshe Rabbeinu and Rabbi Akiva. So Moshe Rabbeinu, in a Navua saw Rabbi Akiva, and he was going much further than him, but it's a different different Nisham altogether. Shehemi Skalos Hamisturin, the point of Teresh Abalpeh, final line, is he Skalos Hamisturin, to reveal that which is mysterious. Shemitoy Chastaras Panim, from the hiddenness of his face. That's our job. Now we have a deeper job of finding Ruchnias and things that are even more Gashmi. The Silva Kanavu. You know, so just 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 thinking to myself, a sequel with all this whole par paragraph here is um, where where wherein lies greatness now? Like, like, like what's greatness? What's who's a, who's a godl, like, what's what's god godless? Again, the godless of a, in the time of the Nevi'im was to have Nevu. The godless now is to be able to see, um, to find the Ruchnius in the Gashmias, uh, like the, 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 in the hiddenness of, of the Gashmias. So whether that's in ourselves, whether that's in the situation, whether it's in our children, place, like that. that it, now it's, it's all about giving the star. And, and the person who can do that becomes a gadol because then you don't see like mama Gili. you know you're seeing it's it's like wow you know like what a muslim schmooze it is right it's not about what's magiyali it's about like what we're discovering where is my little makom here that i'm supposed to be revealing um infinity within nature it could be in something that i do it could be in a tiger that I say or an invention that I make. It could be in a word that I say. But, you know, it, it can be, you know, how, how many times? Like, you can say one good word to somebody, one nice word to somebody, and change their whole attitude. You know, like, so that's, that, that, that may be, that's greatness. That's greatness bigger than writing spark. That's, that's greatness. Greatness is to be able to find something which is seemingly very um, uh, pedestrian 
and turning it into something which is not so. So creating eternity. You know, so by creating that eternity, then we've created the mouthless of Hashem, and then we become um, part of that mouthless, and that's that's greatness, and that's the sequel of the of the, of the paragraph. Thank you.